morning. Wow. How precious. How precious is our Lord. So good. Would you guys just soak it up a minute? Just soak it up a minute. want to break the atmosphere. I was going to have you all stand up and not yet, but I was going to have you stand up and just greet one another. Let's do that afterwards. If you see a face you haven't seen before, say hi, introduce yourself. A lot of new faces today. We love seeing new faces. We're going to read in a minute from Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. But I'm going to talk first, and then we'll go to that. How many of you know that if is a big word in the Bible? I-F, that's a big word. It's also a big word in our life as we live our life. If is a great, big, gigantic word in our life. If you will do this, you will get this. If you do that, you'll get that. How many, how many of you know that? About the ifs in your life? The Lord told me a little while back, he said, listen, Jason. I'm taking you into a new season. Some new things. He said, and if you will lose some weight, you'll feel better. In your body, about yourself. Self-esteem, all these different things. He said, you'll just feel better. Six months ago, 50 pounds ago, when my wife was saying, you look great, the half-truth that she was speaking to me because she didn't want to offend me. Now she knows she has the power and authority to say, well, you're fat. No, she don't say that. But she could. But if you lose this weight, you will feel better. I have never felt in my life better about myself. Never in my life have I felt better about myself. My identity is not lying in how I look, but my identity lies in Him. But in my humanity, I've never felt so good in my life. I can run up a hill without breathing hard. And I want you to know there's ifs in your life too. Many, many ifs in your life that you're going to come across and you're going to come and, and encounter these ifs. But I, I don't have a picture of how, how big I was. Um, some of you might have noticed. Does anybody notice I lost a couple pounds? Yeah. And what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the ifs in your life and, and we're going to talk about prayer. You may not think that it's working now because you just started maybe. But I'm going to tell you, if you press in and you keep going, it's going to work. It's going to keep coming. God's going to keep moving. Things are going to happen. And some people think that if I just pray right now, it's just going to happen right now. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it's in the waiting. Sometimes it's in the waiting. And sometimes that waiting is a long time. If it's spoken in the Bible, depending on what version you use, 574 times. Almost half of those times is in the New Testament. Jesus speaking. If. And he always leaves the if on our side. 
never on God's side, but he leaves the if on our side. If you do this, if you do that, he will fulfill the other end of the if. Listen. Have you ever looked them up? Anybody ever looked the ifs up in the Bible? Yeah, now, now, now I want you to look them up because there's so many of them. Look them up because if you want to promise in the word of God, if you want to promise, look up the ifs. If, if you do this, you're going to get this. Do you know if you fear God, he'll give you longevity of life? But if you don't, you won't have it. I want to fear God so much I live to be 180. I won't live to be 180. I could. I'm maybe, probably not. Is Helen here today? 94, nine, 96, getting ready to turn 97. Almost 98. Helen fears the Lord. No, no, listen. She probably fears the law more than the Lord. She's still driving that car out there. I love it. Still drives the church. That's how much she fears the Lord. You know, he turned 98 and still driving her car to church. Come on. I want to be driving my car at 98, hot rodding around. I know she does. I know she hot rods around. I don't even know if she can hear me. Can you hear me, Helen? Turn them up. Turn them up, Helen. The word talks about if you hear, if you listen, if you wait, if you walk this way, or if you talk this way. There's a song about that. If you don't lie and tell the truth, what will happen? If I, if you and I, the word of God says in Second Chronicles, if my people, listen, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Listen, you will humble yourself. My people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What's he say he'll do? He said, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Do you think that God sent someone to Martinsville, Indiana that was headed to Florida just on a whim? Mm -mm. No, he did not. We was not planted by another church. We were planted by the Father himself. He said, will you do this? And as you know, I said no three times. Three days, three times. No, no, no. But he showed me that he has something for me. And I said to him, if you pay for this, because I didn't want to struggle through a ministry. I know what it's like to struggle through a ministry. And when you're doing something in yourself, I know what that's like. And I said, I don't want to struggle. If you pay for it, I'll do it. And he has. And we are. But because God said, will you do this? We said, yes. And we went. And here we are living that yes. And he said, not if I, if you and I, or if my people, listen, we have to come together. We have to come together like we are right now in the time of prayer. In the morning times of prayer, we have to come together and do what he's called us to do. We have to humble ourselves. We have to put life aside and do what he wants us to do, which is pray. If we want to see this city, which is what he's called us to do, turned upside down for Jesus, we have to pray. Individually is great. With a brother is great. But to collectively is what he's saying. If my people who are called by my name, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock is a perfect time for you to come and, and try it out. You want to see your kid's life wrecked for Jesus? Come on Wednesday. 
Lord, we're corporately here together, worshiping and praying together. So the if is on you. If you want to see change, if you want to see things happen, the if is on your end. Come and do what he said to do, and watch what happens. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, not their own things, not what they want in life, not what life has for them, but if they seek my face, and that's what we do on Wednesday, we make it all vertical and not horizontal. It's all about him and not about us. If you seek my face, then he said, I will forgive their sins, this land, their sins, and I will heal their land, this city, Martinsville, Indiana. Obviously, if he called us here, this city needs some healing. Obviously, if he called us here, this city needs some sins forgiven. Because there's plenty of churches in the region that are great and awesome. But for some reason, he said, I need one more, just one more. But I need to be on this side of the veil. Not that he's not in the other churches, but in this church, he's on this side of the veil. I've not been to them churches, so I have no idea. But I know in this church, he's on this side of the curtain. And he's mingling with us. He's connecting with us. He's touching us, just like he did this week. If my people who are called by my name. Prayer is one of the most, I'm learning, is one of the most valuable things that that we have seen to see something from God happen. And I want you to know the enemy is not going to give up just because you um, say a little prayer. But... You need to have a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of living for God in prayer, on your knees, off your knees, running around, whatever you do, however you pray, laying on your face, it needs to be a lifestyle, not just every now and then, well, well, I'm struggling right now and I need this right now. God, will you help me? Will you give it to me? No, we, we, we don't pray like that. We can't pray like that. It has to be an everyday, all-day thing saying, God, I thank you that my children are under the blood. I thank you that I've lived my life pouring into them and that the blessing's going to come back and your word's not going to come back void in my kids' lives. I'm going to tell you right now, I get so frustrated in some of my kids' lifestyles right now. I don't even know what to do. I told my wife yesterday, and I know, I know we're live and they might listen to this, but I told my wife yesterday, I don't even know what to do at this point other than pray. I don't even know what to say. I'm to the point with some stuff that's, that, 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 that's going on, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I never, I never spoke that into them. I never brought them up this way. I never taught them this. I don't even know what to say other than, God, you know my kids. You know that I've prayed over them, I've spoken over them, I've declared over them, I've decreed over them, all these things of heaven upon them. You know them. I want my kids to be living the fullest because there's so much potential in them to reach a lost and dying world. There's so much potential for them to see heaven in their lives. This generation, I, I don't, I, and I know, I know we've got some young people here. Do they just love living in torment? I mean, it's like they're just so accustomed to it. It seems like they just enjoy it. I'm like, yeah. My thing is, let's put the kids to bed <laughs> early. Let's enjoy a little bit of our life. But prayer is going to help. And prayer is going to collectively come together. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in, um, in Ecclesiastes 4.12, it says this. And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. And a cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. Do you want to fight a battle? We're going to sing this song. This is how I fight my battle. I'm going to talk during it, but we're going to sing this song together. Go ahead. 
I was going to start it, but I'll let you in case I get off key. And this is how I fight my battles. It's a little high, but it's all right. And this is how I fight my battles. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. Turn my game down just a little bit. Oh, Jesus. And this is how I fight my battles. And prayer together is how we fight our battles. And this is how I fight my battles. I might not be able to take some things on by myself. And this is how I fight Sing my it. battles. But if I have and a partner. This is how I fight. If I have a partner that has a partner in prayer, binding those things together, binding those cords together, those prayers together. Wow. What can we do with that? Just like this. Bind this together. Our prayers are bound together. Almost like DNA. Bind this together. And when we do that, those cords. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I find my battles. 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 And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. Just pray together. This is how I fight my battles. Don't do it alone. Pray together. Come on, Uve. Let's do it together. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. I'm surrounded come on. by you. Come up here. Brother, come up here. Let's try. It may look like I'm surrounded, come on. but I'm surrounded. If you want to pray? If you got a problem in life right now, come up here. Let's pray together. It may look like We're going to tackle I'm it together, all of us. But I'm surrounded by you. And this, this is how I find my battles. And this, this is how I find my battles. And 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 this is how I find my battles. Father, we thank you, Lord. God, that you bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. God, that we're together as a team. This is how I Glorifying you, lifting you up, magnifying you. Father, we thank you, Lord. God, that you solve all the problems of our day because you, Jesus, live in us. You love us. You want relationship with us. Thank you, Father. God, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. But I'm surrounded by you, Lord. Surrounded by people who love you. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. And 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 this is how I find It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And it may look yes, like Jesus. I'm surrounded, Hallelujah. but I'm surrounded by, by you. you. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Share that cool day, day.
That's how we should be always, fighting our battles that way. You can't do it on your own sometimes. People need to know where you are. They need to know what you're struggling with. Don't be afraid to come and confide in a friend that's in your circle. Confide in them. Trust them with your life. That they can help you. They can help you with all the things that you're going through. We're going to go through things. We're going to go through things. Thank you, Faith. Cody, the other day, was in the back room. And he thought he was going to take me down. We were goofing off and building stuff. He's a pretty big guy. He thought I was a little weaker than I was. And I think I hurt him, but I didn't mean to. Pinned him pretty quick. He tapped out pretty quick. He said, man, <laughs> I didn't think you could do that. But imagine what we could do with two or more gathered. He's in the midst. Imagine what we could do with all of us together, literally coming together, not fighting against one another, not, not doing things to spring into score, not talking about one another to one another but talking to one another about praying for one another. Not exposing our problems to one another in a way that, that, that is a gossiping type of way. It, and I know sometimes you'll say, hey, what about, you know, did you hear about so-and-so? Well, we're going to pray for him here in a minute, but did you hear about him? In a gossip type of a fashion. Let's don't do that. Let's go with people we trust and say, so and so struggling with this. They don't even have to know what it is. Because they can fight in you with that. They're struggling. Maybe not even with this. They're just struggling. Let's pray for them. And behind the scenes, you're praying for your brother. And you're watching out in the open what God is doing. How he's touching their lives. Cody don't know how many times I've prayed for him. How many times I pressed in for him? How many times I got in the water for him? What a difference. You've been obedient to God. Through prayers. We have to come together and pray. restructure your life to make it about prayer. The things that you do, do you know, I mean, if I could give you a list of what I have given up to be here for my bride, for my grandkids, for my children. I might have one show up tomorrow, a grandkid. Maybe come out tomorrow, I don't know, we'll see. But it's worth it. Everything that I've sacrificed is worth it. Because I see the result. My boys are big now. They used to try to take me down. One and two and three. And they would grab me and I'd still throw them all around. But I wouldn't even try it today. They're way bigger than I am. I wouldn't even mess with any one of them. But in prayer, we can all do it together. If you really want to see those ones with backpacks out in the street, as I did last night, late at night, 11 o'clock at night, see them walking the streets with backpacks. Thinking they have friends and, and all these people that are walking around with them. They don't because they'll dump them in a heartbeat. They'll dump them for this and dump them for that. But oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And if they would just realize that, if we would get on board in our prayer time, 
in our prayer time to reach out to this city because our prayer can reach out to this city even if we don't even step one foot out there. God can come to them in, in, in night vision, night dreams and show them who they are and whose they are just because of our prayers, because of our collective prayers. The, the enemy's not intimidated by your one prayer. He's intimidated by a lifestyle of prayer. First John. Chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light, listen, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son will cleanse us from all sin, all sin. If what? If we walk in the light as he is in the light. Are you walking in the light this morning as he is in the light? Verse 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That is, if you're not a believer, and you say, I have, not, I'm not, I have no sin, you're a liar. The truth is not in you, because you have sin. But Jesus came to pay the price. And he says this, in verse 9, If you confess your sins, if you confess your sins, he's what? Faithful and just to forgive you your sins. And do what? How much unrighteousness he's going to cleanse you from? And what do you got to do? Confess your sin. So when you confess your sin, he's going to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you're walking in unrighteousness, confess it. Confess your unrighteousness so you can walk in full righteousness all the time. I'm no longer a sinner because Christ paid the price for that. I no longer walk in the law because I walk in grace. I walk in Jesus. He is my life. He is my light. He is the one. Are you tired of being in a mess? Are you tired of your children's lives being in a mess? Let's come together and pray. Wednesday night, let's come together. Let's pray. And let's thank God for our children. Let's thank Him that He's moving in their lives. Let's thank Him that He's bringing people across their paths that are going to touch their lives. First John chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. And we're going to close here in just a minute. Little children, these things I write to you, so that you may sin not. And if anyone sins, he has an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He himself is a poor petition for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the whole world. That includes our children, our loved ones, our family. That includes everybody. Now by this we know that we know him, if we do what? You know that you know him if you keep his commandments. And what are his commandments? I hear some of you. Yeah. Yeah. Is it up here? It ain't up here. What are his commandments? Love one another as you love yourself. He 
Love one another as you love yourself. Yeah. If we went by the law, which we cannot live by, because if we tried to live by the law, we would, we would not even be able to. Do you know you guys break the law every day? Man's law, every day. You're breaking it. I'm going to tell you how you're breaking it. We're going to close here, but I'm going to tell you how you're breaking it. So when I start sharing these things, you're going to have to line up. Or you'll suffer consequences of man's law. There's five things that you probably don't know that you do. Copyright. You ever copyrighted a CD? You ever took a CD and copied it for someone else? Yeah, that's against the law. That's a federal crime. That's like federal. Federal prison. If you're going to do any of them, do that one because that's federal and that will get you in a better place because federal prison is a little nicer to be in than the other one. Gambling in your own home is against the law. And this was back in 2019, so they might have changed some of these things. Gambling in your own home is against the law. Using your phone while driving, Miss Shelley, is against the law. Smoking weed is against the law. It, I mean, it really is. It's a federal law that you cannot smoke weed. State laws have passed it where you can, but federal law says you cannot smoke weed. God's law is going to go even further, and, and, and the grace of God is going to cover you, but he, God is still the one you're smoking weed. Anything that's going to alter your mind to the things that are not of heaven, we shouldn't do. Anything that's going to alter your mind or your body and not according to heaven, we should not do. And most of you probably did this today even. Jaywalking is against the law. Who's jaywalked this past week? Oh, I know you all have. You know, okay, let me give you the definition of jaywalking. Anywhere there's not a street crossing and you've crossed, that's jaywalking. Just like man couldn't live by the law that God had because he had to be perfect to live that kind of a law. That's why there were sacrifices made. Jesus came and paid that price for once and for all that we could have him in us, living in us, that we no longer have to go by the law, but we go be, by grace. And in the grace, law will just come in. You will want to do what you're supposed to do. The Ten Commandments are given. You're going to want to do all those things. You're going to want to love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to want to have no other gods before you but him. Little G's as well. A lot of you have little G's. Can't have those either. Anything that, that is before him, get rid of. All your little G's, get rid of. So if you want a rainbow, you have to have the rain. It's true. You can't have a rainbow without the rain. So that's something you can visualize. No rain, no rainbow. Another factor that you have to have the sun, too, with the rain, to have a rainbow. All right. What we're going to do, we've got five minutes. Who has a mic? Does anybody know an if in the Bible that stands out to them that would help us today? An if in the word of God, an if whether it pertains to healing, whether it pertains to freedom, whatever it pertains to. Does anybody have an if? We're going to let you read it out. Don't leave me hanging here. Caesar, hold on. We got, hold on so we can get it recorded. Um, so we can record it. Yeah, it says here in Matthew 18, 19, actually Jesus is speaking. He says, if. Two of you on earth agree yeah. about anything they ask. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. I would suggest we need to know what the other one is praying about in order to agree together yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. It's good.
good. So what Steve is saying is when you meet with your brother, do it in the right heart, with the right motive, in the right way. To share what you need to share. So you can agree. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Yeah. You lack wisdom? What do you got to do? Ask for it. He'll give it to you. Love that. Anybody else have an if in the Bible? You got one? Hold the mic closer so we can hear you. That mic's kind of muffly, too. This is uh, just one that I personally struggle with. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Galatians 1, 10. Yeah. Come on. You got one here. So there's one in the back. She got a mic. There's one in the back, too. Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Yeah. Come on. If God is for us, who can be against us? First, <clears throat> first Peter, it says, uh, starting in 14, if you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed for the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Good. This is Romans 8. Uh, Verse 9, but when the spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by the flesh, but by the spirit. And if you are not joined to the spirit of the anointed one, you are not of him. Come on. Good. This is Hebrews 11. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens <clears throat> and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening... God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Yeah. Wow. We'll, we'll, we'll close with that one. So good. Thank you. It's kind of what America looks like today. Needs a little bit of a whipping. Correction and chastening. Prayer is going to do that. Let's stand. Sean Foyt is in Indianapolis tonight. Four o'clock at the State House. I encourage every one of you to be there. Support him. Rain or shine. You'd go to a ball game, rain or shine. You'd go to a lot of things, rain or shine. You'd even camp, rain or shine. Or tear down a camp, rain or shine. <laughs> As Brother Steve said, listen, when you do come together and you pray for one another, be careful how you present things to each other. Okay? Sometimes people have unspoken prayers. We can disagree with those. God knows. We don't have to know anything, but God knows everything. He knows our heart behind it. Let your heart's motives be right and in the right way. Father, we just love you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this house. Thank you for just the subtleness of today, the peace of today, your presence that is here today. Lord, we thank you for it. As soon as we walk in the doors, we know you're here. Thank you for this body. Thank you for the army that you're growing, for this city, to reach out, to touch, to minister to. Thank you, Father. I glorify you. In Jesus' name. Greet someone. Say hi to someone. Tell them you love them. Come Wednesday and pray. Thank you guys for being here today.